everyone, my name is Jo and I love to read. Today I'm going to be doing my February 2021 reading wrap up. I read two physical books in February and zero audio books. The first book that I finished is Harry Potter A History of Magic by the British Library. I am going to be putting a picture up here of a donation that I have made to a transgender charity because I do not support what JK Rowling is saying and doing and thus I'm trying to carbon neutral my mentioning of her on my channel because I still love Harry Potter and I still want to partake in Harry Potter things but every time I mention Harry Potter in a video I am donating to a charity. When I bought this edition of Harry, well it's not an edition of Harry Potter, when I bought this novel or actually asked for it for my birthday I didn't know what I was actually asking for. I don't even, I didn't think that it was a hist Hogwarts A History as a lot of people thought which is the book that Hermione always talks about but I kind of, I, I don't yeah, I didn't even really know what I thought about it. It was ages ago that I actually got it. But what this book is, is it's a companion to a exhibit that was done by the British Library after the 20th anniversary of Harry Potter. And the exhibition featured a different class in the Hogwarts curriculum and had different magic folklore history artifacts and information shown to show where us muggles or people in real life have actually gotten our magic information from so things that have inspired JK and just people in general for these different Hogwarts classes so like alchemy and potions and herbology and care of magical creatures all of that and so this book actually has one chapter per each lesson or most of the most common lessons it would be a bit hard to do all of them and it actually talks about the origins of those a lot of the time back like centuries ago and explains how we have got the knowledge and the information and the folklore that we have today so it was a bit different it was definitely non-fiction even though it is based or it is like it is because this has been written because of a fiction work it definitely is non-fiction because it analyzes all the folklores and the histories with it it was pretty interesting and I don't regret reading it but I also feel like it's not something that I necessarily would read again or really needed to have read and the second and final book that I finished in February was The Good Luck Girls by Charlotte Nicole Davis. This is the first in a series and it's also Charlotte Nicole Davis' debut novel. I absolutely loved it. I'm pretty sure I gave it 4.75 stars. It was just missing a little bit in certain areas which stopped me from giving it 5 stars. But man, I absolutely loved this book. Loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. <laughs> this is based in a made-up fantasy s world it is a western but it does have some supernatural and fantasy elements within it the story follows five girls who throughout various reasons have found their way into these welcome houses which is basically just a pretty way of calling them brothels most of the girls get into these homes because the world that they're living in is very 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 harsh it is very hard to make a just to make something of yourself in the world and there is a lot of racial hatred underlying in these stories basically the dust bloods which are the people with the dark skin they at some stage there was this war and they ended up losing and now generations later this is the effects of it and all of the dust bloods actually have a debt that they need to pay back and so what ends up happening is that they go to work on these farms and in these places which I guess is like a mirror of like plantations in our world and they have they're there to work off their debt but what actually ends up happening is they get paid so little for the labor that they do that they end up actually owing more after a year because of all their board and their food and the upkeep that the owners their employers have to pay to keep them alive because they get paid so little so they end up being work, end up owing more money at the end of the year and so people are just rolling in debt years and years and years and years and there is basically no way for their children to get out of slavery but unfortunately what happens a lot of the families are actually struggling to feed their girls especially when they're younger and they are fed a lie by these welcome houses and they are promised that their girls will be taken care of fed medical bills and all that kind of stuff which is great and they do 
But what they fail to mention is that they will be sold into sex slavery. And that is where we come into the story with the Good Luck Girls. It starts with Clementine, who is the catalyst, and she is, a, this is not a spoiler, but she is about to sleep with her, I don't want to say sleep, like, she's just entered her first night as a sundown girl, which as, as a prostitute, as a sex slave, and as it's about to happen, she panics through some altercation ends up killing the man that she is supposed to have been sold in or killed the man that she was supposed to be spending the night with and her and four other girls including her sister escape the welcome house so it's a really action-packed journey and it is a topic that is really close to my heart it is really really sad to be reading this book knowing that this kind of stuff does happen and that even though these girls end up getting away a lot of people don't have the resources and the means or that kind of thing to get away and escape I won't really tell you what happens to them when they escape do they get recaptured do they not you know what what happens there I'm not gonna say <laughs> but it's really awful and the supernatural elements that come into it are very light and one of them is that when the girls are sold into the welcome houses they are made to have this magic tattoo put onto them that sort of creep starts here and then it creeps up and blooms into a flower as they get older and hit puberty and these tattoos can't disappear you can't get rid of them there is no way to get rid of them no one to pay to do that if you were to escape if you cover them up they start to glow and after about 20 minutes they are burning like a red hot brand so even if you do escape there is literally no way to get away the main plot of the book is that they have heard of this fairy tale about this woman that you can pay to get them to remove them so that's when that is their goal as they're running away so there is a plot to it they're running away to this person and then everything else obviously in shoes and that kind of thing the other supernatural element is really quite interesting actually there are ghosts and spirits in this world and there are kind of like there are just like the poltergeisty kind of ones that you can survive with you can get rid of them with like a normal priest or whatever something like that they're not very difficult to get rid of but then there are these awful ones that you can't see and that live out in the forest and everywhere around the towns and on like the main roads and stuff like that is covered in iron because that is the only thing that will kill these things or that will, sorry, it's the only thing that will keep these things away. And if you venture out into the forest where they aren't, where there is no iron and nothing that will keep them away, you can't see it but these spirits are literally so angry that they will like rip you to shreds and kill you, which is a... It's supposed to be I guess a metaphor for all the horrible things that have happened in this world because these spirits weren't here until this big war happened and then they are the product of like the deaths of people that have gone through so much hardship and wrongship and tortured souls and that kind of thing so that is a really interesting element that adds a lot of like spook and scare factor to this book not so like I don't want to say spook and scare factor I can't like it just it just adds something like they're very different creatures that I haven't been into before like I haven't seen before and so there's this is no, by no means a scary novel but it just brings something to something different to like your average like life or death situation it was really interesting so this book was really fantastic I was really enjoying it it is just a teen novel a YA it's one of those books that kind of if you've seen my reading vlogs before but I was a bit like oh my god like such a heavy topic for a YA book but it was absolutely fantastic one of the quality YAs that you can read even when you're older and I really recommend it for everyone it like oh pulled on my heartstrings oh my god I can't wait to read the next book which is actually out this year or coming out later this year but it was so good it was so satisfying there were some twists and turns some things I was able to guess but that was okay and I kind of expect that with some teen novels that I'm going to be able to guess what's happened because of how much I've read but it was still there were still surprises in what happened and I really 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 recommend it oh my gosh you guys need to read it it was so good it was so good it was so good if you want to support a person of color a BIPOC author but, like this is fantastic it is an amazing debut and I only wish I could write something half as good as this I don't know what negative to say about this book obviously because I gave it 4.75 stars there was a little point where I did dip out of the story for a tiny bit and there was some event that should have maybe be like <gasps> again but I wasn't because I was just a bit I don't know what it was whether it was my mood or not 
there was just a little a little segment um, and there was something that even though I was actively really wanting to read it there was something that was stopping it from being the amazing five star unputdownable books I don't know what it is but there was something but regardless read this book it is so good it is so good for the world the soul for the publishing industry to show them what we that we want more books like this it breaks my heart that this could be considered fairly realistic that the topics in this are still topical i wish that they weren't but reading more books like this brings more awareness into this kind of thing and hopefully it will impassion someone who maybe wasn't aware of this and can start again to educate a new generation of readers since this is actually a ya book and not the intended age range is, is not me because I'm 26, I'm out of the YA, but still, it is it is worthwhile. It can be for YAs, you know, buy it for your child, get her to read it, or him to read it, then read it yourself. It's one of those. It's fantastic, and I will be eagerly waiting the next book. Okie dokie, that is my February wrap up. Thanks so much for joining me again for another video. What did you read in February? Were there any really good books? any not so good books let me know in the comments below like this video if you have enjoyed watching it and if you want to see more from me then subscribe and i will chat to you guys again next time bye this is like literally the like boring colored spine section so i need to read more books by authors with the last name b and c and D and E and F to make this brighter even though I'm really happy with this it's not very actually okay let's do this I'm gonna tuck in Mary Great Bruce and I'm gonna push out the good luck girls that'll make me happy